Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Rose McGowan. <laughs> the definition of a revolution can be described as a forcible overthrow of a government or social order in favor of a new system. These movements are initiated by revolutionaries, people who take up the cause of bringing about change in an existing system and are not afraid of pushing back. The roots of a revolution are in the actions taken by individuals willing to, find, to fight for change. To bring change or invention in any part of life, culture, politics, society, art, or business, we need disruptors and lateral thinkers. People who take on challenges for a greater good, who are willing to sacrifice to speak up for all the unheard voices, for those who have not had the strength to fight for their rights, who don't back off and don't let themselves be diminished by others, who don't lose their path because others stand there in their way. I, myself, have fought my way through cultures, beliefs, restrainment, and expectations. As all human beings, I, as a woman, have the wish to live a free and self-determined life. Unfortunately, for many women in this world, this is still not reality. Anyone who belittles or denies the existence of sexual harassment is quite out of touch with the real world. Not everyone has the courage to say no or immediately turn to the public. On the contrary, victims of abuse sometimes are so mentally caught up that they let themselves be treated like this for years because they feel ashamed, confused, weak, guilty. Feeling power must be a sweet thing. Exerting power must even taste sweeter but unfortunately comes often with humiliation. There are so many different reasons for this, but mainly people humiliate others so that their own humiliation, their own inadequate, sorry for my English, their own inadequacies, their own insecurity seem just a little bit more bearable. Sexual harassment and abuse is nothing but exercising power. Power to dominate other people, to own them. The mere existence of that abuse is unacceptable, of course, but throughout the times we got used to it, while being a part of a system predominantly built by man. So we got used to remain silent where we need to speak, remain passive, where we should turn on action. We got used to it because it was regarded as normal. Finally, it has become normal. For most of us, it is completely unimaginable how much courage is needed and how strong one must be to defend oneself in public. You must fear that people won't believe you, that you can lose everything just because you speak your truth. Above all, one's own dignity. But as long as people criticize you for speaking out and fighting back, it will take a long time for women to not feel guilty about such abuses. A true revolutionary of our time is Rose McGowan. 
Against all odds, she had the courage to speak out, the boldness to break a taboo, and through the start, a conversation. A conversation that was way overdue. Rose, you gave so many women a voice and decided not to be quiet about injustice. Injustice that happened to you, but also to so many others. Your attitude is admirable and you can wake up proudly every single day. Whereas a lot of people with their bigotry and hypocrisy should just spare us with their words and keep silent. Therefore, I'm shaking, I'm sorry. I'm especially proud to have the honor to present you the DLD Impact Award today, an award for women who bring about change in society with outstanding commitment. As Oprah Winfrey has just said in her speech at the Golden Globes, speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we all have. Thank you, Rose McGowan, for your truth. Bravo, Sybil. Thank you, DLD. Thank you, Sybil. Brava. Brava. Today, I want to talk to you about being human. Because I think we've talked a lot about the men and women issue. And I don't think we've really had that much success so far. So I was wondering and thinking about it today and for a while now, what if we step backwards? What if we stopped trying to figure out our differences and started figuring out our sameness? What if we stopped trying to figure out how to do power plays and dominance and instead recognized everybody as a sovereign being from very early, early start from, say, zero? until however old you may grow to be. I think if we can embrace our humanity, especially in the worlds that we occupy, we occupy a space in people's minds. We occupy a space in their hearts. And we occupy a space in their life. It's really quite profound what content creators do, what tech wizards do, what entrepreneurs do, what all of us working our own special magic to make the world better do. But while we do that, I urge you to consider women as equal, not to you, but to your being. Not to you as you are in your inhabited form of your assigned gender, but as just two beings of light on this planet for who knows how long we're going to be here, so we may as well get free, right? I mean, we've been born into these roles. We've seen what they do. This is from the beginning of written time. Women, I would love to never say that word again. And men, I would love to never say that word again. Gender, I would love to never say that word again. I think if we can get out of the trap that's been set for us, to realize, men, that you were born with a brass ring of a type, but it doesn't mean you do what you need to do to deserve it. To realize that you can be better and you can be free. You don't have to be trapped in, in what Hollywood has given you to model as an image. There was a, somebody posted on Facebook, their two-year-old punching along, uh, with Rambo, you know, and then doing the machine gun. And this little two-year-old had every move down, this two-year-old baby boy. And the woman, his mother that put it on Facebook, said, isn't this funny? And I thought, no. I think that's heartbreaking. You've just shown that two-year-old boy what it means to be a male. 
and they're now stuck in that lie. Because I believe we feel deeply, all of us, and I believe we can be more, and I think it's incumbent upon us to really consider what we're putting into people's minds, to really look at who makes up the board. Is it 50-50 in our, in our workplace? It's really pretty simple to not sexually harass or do power plays. Just don't do it. We all know the people in our office that are like, God, it would be so great if they just were not here. Well, okay. There are ways to remedy that. It's, it's time. Just go forward. It's, it's, I know it's a scary, strange period right now, and there's a lot of evaluation and re-evaluation going on, and I think that's an amazing, wonderful thing. Because what I wanted to do, my work that started three years ago, I've kind of, in the back, been, uh, I'm an entrepreneur myself, and that's what I thought. I thought so, too. <laughs> I want that after everything I say. It's, it's, you know, being an entrepreneur for me means freedom. But then what I did with being an entrepreneur was conduct kind of my own social reengineering project. That's what I've been up to for the past three years. A lot of these things are about to come out. And one of the things I say in the book I wrote, Brave, was my thoughts will rest in your mind and your conscience. I take that responsibility very seriously. And I think if we can start there by recognizing that we're all sovereign beings of light and power, that we're here just to live up to our best and fullest potential, that we can be all of it. All of it. It's amazing what we can do. I'm so, so inspired by this room and the people at this conference. I'm so inspired to see how next year there's going to be a lot more women here. I think actually 50% of you, 50% of us, and then we get to be beings of light, and isn't that great? I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to accept this award. It's pretty cool, I got to say. It's America is, uh, well, hell. <laughs> I mean, what is there to say at this point? I am profoundly sorry, by the way. Uh, sorry for the destabilization um, that we've encountered in this vast, very turbulent time. I think the best thing that we can remember right now is that we are allies, that we are one unified voice and force, and that we can win through spirit and conquer through love and adventure. Don't be scared. It is maybe a new world order, but that's okay. I know you haven't had to consider a lot of the ways in which women have suffered, but we have. And it's time for that suffering to stop. And so many boys, too, and so many of every single person. Because like somebody said to me before I got on stage, it's not me too, it's we too. But beyond that, I think beyond being a survivor, we're flowers. And we're going to bloom in the most extraordinary ways. So again, thank you for this award. Thank you for the acknowledgement. I will keep fighting. I will keep speaking. I will keep truth-telling. Let me say one last thing. I want to introduce the idea of putting art into everything that you do. Because so many of us, if I said right now, who's, um, who here is creative? Raise your hand. Fuck yeah. I asked that question recently, and I got about four hands in about a 300-seat auditorium. And that was tragic to me. Because art, like, it so profoundly needs to influence tech, and it so profoundly needs to influence places like America. Help. SOS. Sorry, I probably am going to get in trouble for that one, but whatever. Um, I think I will end it there. Thank you. Thank you, Steffi. Thank you all.